In this video, I'm going to be showing you all the Blender shortcut keys you need to know if you are using Blender. So, let's start off very, very easy. I'm going to get into the difficult stuff and the, like, the ones that you probably don't know. Now, the one that you should know is when you're saving your Blender file. So, if you do Control S, you will save your Blender file. Now, you also have Control N if you want to create a new file. Control N to create a new file. Now, if you do not know the shortcut, you can also go into File and save it over here. And you can also create new files over here. As you can see, the Control N. And control S over there. Now we also have Control Z. Now Control Z is when you, when you want to undo your previous action. For example, if you want to scale this up, I'm going to show you the shortcut key for scaling in a minute. If you want to scale it up like that. If you want to undo it, you want to go back to your previous action, do Control Z to undo your action. Now, if you do Control Shift Z, you're going to redo your previous action to so Control Shift. Z going to read your previous action, we're going to scale it back up. And now, if you are tired with Blender, you're fed up, you can literally quit Blender, you can just control Q to quit Blender and close your file. And now, once we have done that, I do not want to quit Blender, I love Blender. And now, what we want to do, if you want to delete your rubbish key, X to delete. What you can also do is press the delete button on your keyboard, delete, and it will automatically delete it. But if you press the X button, you'll get an option where you can press delete on that. Now, I'm going to add my lovely cube back. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to tell you another one. Now, if you want to select every single object in your scene, I mean every single object, just press A. It will select every single object in your scene. And now I have another one where you, for example, you have this cube selected. You want to select every single other object other than this boring cube, okay? You just press Control i to invert your selection. Now, as you can see, the camera and the light is selected. Now, if you control i again, the cube will be selected because that's the only object in the scene. Now, let's move on and look at this left-hand side of our viewport. We have a toolbar here. Now, sometimes it can be in the way. The toolbar can be in the way. Now, if you want to, um, um, for example, if you're here, the toolbar is in the way of the cube. What you just can do, hide the toolbar by pressing T. Now, if you press T, it will hide the toolbar. And if it's already hidden, press T again. It will unhide it and will bring it on the viewport. Now, similarly, on the right-hand side of your viewport window, you can press N. Um, and to get this side panel over here. This is when you can see the transformations of your selected objects. For example, if you select this, press N, as you'll see that 0, 0, 0, 0 is very, very um, applied. And you have the toolbar here, the view, and you also see your assets, plugins, and add-ons on this end, if you, in this side um, bar as well. Now, let's go to our lovely edit mode. Now, the shortcut to go into edit mode of an object, so press this object. Now, I'm going to hide this um, sidebar by pressing N, hide the toolbar as well by pressing T. When you want to go to edit mode of this object, you just press tab on your keyboard. Press tab, it will go into your lovely, lovely, lovely edit mode. Now, once you have done that, as you can see right now, it's in your vertex select mode. Now, you know that we have vertex select mode, we have side select. We have edge select, sorry, edge select and face select. Vertex select, edge select and face select. Now there's actually shortcuts to go from either one of them. Press one to go into vertex select mode. It's already in vertex select mode. Go press two to go into edge select mode and press three to go into face select mode. One, two, three. Super simple. Now remember, it's not numpad one. It's not numpad three. It is not numpad three. It's not the numpad numbers. It's just the normal one, two, and three, okay, in the keyboard. On top of the alphabet, on top of the letters, you have those numbers. Make sure it's those numbers, otherwise it does not work unless you have changed the keyboard binding, okay? Now, another one is when you're modeling, you want to go into your top orthographic view, side orthographic view, and front orthographic view. But the way you can go do this is go to press your numpad numbers, okay? For example, for numpad one, you would go into front view. As you can see over here on the left top left, you can see it's a front orthographic view. Press numpad three to go into your right orthographic view and numpad seven to go into your top 
orthographic view. Now, before I leave my edit mode, now to leave your edit mode is very easy to press tab. But before I leave that, I'm going to go into edge select. I mean, it's face uh, vertex select mode, pressing one. Now, I want to extrude out this face. Now, what you can do is select every single thing, and this is a face selected. I'm gonna, I want to extrude this out. You can press E to extrude this out. Is it um, shortcut E to extrude this out? Press E to extrude it out. I want to scale the face up a bit. So I'll press, press S to scale it. Now, S is a shortcut for scaling. S is to scale it up like that. Now, another cool edit is I. Press I to inset it. Now, it's called insetting. And then you can press um, E to extrude it down. Maybe scale it up in the inside, something like that. And that is something cool created. Anyways, I'll go. If you want to know how other shortcuts to edit mode, if you press T to get your toolbar edit mode, you'll see all of these options. Now, if you hover over this, it's for example the knife tool, it says cut new topology. The shortcut is given, it says shift spacebar K. Now, every single edit mode has a specific one. So we have control R for loop cut, bevels control B. Insets I, as I told you, E is extrusion and adding Q is shift, um, shift A, as you know, and spin. Okay, once we know that, once you know that, tab X to delete this. Now, I'm going to show you is how we can grab, scale, and rotate object with your shortcut. For example, let's have our lovely Q back. Now, I want to scale this up, S to scale it up, S to scale it, scale it down or up. G is to move it around your viewport and you also have rotate it. Now, if you want to grab it, scale it, rotate it onto a specific axis, as you can see, we have our red line, which represents our X axis, a green line, which represents our Y axis, and our blue line, we can't see right now. If you can different orthography, you're going to see your blue line over here, which is our Z axis. These are our colors for our axis. Now, you can see this on our top right over here. Now, once you know your axes, now if you want to move this, move this cube on the Y axis, you can just press G, followed by the Y, it will lock it in the Y axis, and you can move it in the Y axis. Now you can also do that in the X and the Z. Now, once you have done that, we can also do that scaling, scale it on the X, scale it on the Y, and scale it on the Z. So, once we have done that, you can also do the same thing with rotating, rotate on the Y, rotate in the X, rotate on the Z. You can create cool um, transformations. Now, the one thing I also want to show you is um, duplicating and link duplicating. Now, if you press Shift A, we have our cube. We want to duplicate this. Now, to duplicate it, you probably know the Shift T, duplicate it. Now, this is not sometimes not very good because if you go into Material Preview, Want to add a color to this? Let's say we wanna make it um, blue. It will only change one of them because they're not linked together. Now, if you want to have them linked, you can do Alt D to link duplicate them. Alt D, Alt D, and Alt D. Now, if you change what colors for one of them, it will change the colors for all of them because they're linked together. Now. Another one is to move your 3D cursor. As you can see, your 3D cursor is this one right here, this red circle over here. Now, if you want to change it, move it around, you're going to do shift right click, so shift right click to move your 3D cursor around, something like that. Now, what does the 3D cursor do? It basically tells you where your object will land when you add an object to your scene. For example, if I have 3D cursor over there, do shift in, add a plane, your plane would be there. Now, if you want to focus on a object, you can press the decimal point on your numpad and you will get your focus on a specific object that is selected in your scene. Now, we also have adding keyframes. Now, that is when you, when you animate stuff. So, I to add a keyframe, move it up. So, let's move this up and grab it. And I add a key from that. As you can see, we animated basically a simple animation done by adding literally two key frames. Now, you also want to know if um, parenting is control P, very, very easy. And we also have this literally, this is like 10% of the shortcuts in Blender. 
If you want to know more about shortcuts, you can go to the Blender website and look at the document for all the shortcuts because um, that's where all the shortcuts are. Literally, there's literally so many. There's like look, the shading. There are shading shortcuts, texture paint shortcuts, UV editing shortcuts, many shortcuts, sculpting shortcuts as well. So I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and watch my other videos on my channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video.